All right, so Aiden Kunst here from Boiler Basketball Breakdown. I'm here with 2022 Purdue commit Braden Smith, and we're going to go over a little bit of his film from his three sectional games uh, from last season, uh, going through those games here. 23 and eight versus Zionsville in game one, 41 and eight versus Noblesville in game two. And then they lost in the championship to Carmel who went on to win the state championship. He had 18 and five in that game. Um, Braden, how you doing, man? Appreciate you joining me. Yeah, for sure. I'm doing awesome and looking forward to uh, breaking some film down and going from there. All right, let's do it. So first little clip here is, is not, you know, not film, but I've got you just warming up. This is before the Zionsville game or maybe it was the Noblesville game, but either way, what, what are your feelings like when you're going through a pregame warm-up, especially a sectional pregame warm-up where I know the jitters are maybe a little bit more? Yeah, um, I, get, I guess just try to get the mindset going, you know, just get locked yeah. in, get focused, get the game plan down, and just go from there and get your teammates ready to go and ready to play, get them all on the same page, and just get going, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And then I had I had this next clip. Just a simple free throw, right? But mm -hmm. you're an 86% free throw shooter. I assume that's something that you've worked on kind of your whole life. First off, what do you, you know, it looks like you kind of just catch the ball. You don't really do too much with it when you get that that free throw yeah. routine. What, what have you done kind of your whole life? And then and what do you do, you know, off the court or, or at least not in games to work on that? Yeah, really just repetition. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing too crazy about it. Just whatever feels comfortable. Um, obviously, I don't need the ball for 10 seconds, but just whatever's comfortable, something quick, get your eyes up on the rim and just shoot it. Be confident yeah, when you want to go and go from there. Absolutely. So let's get into some of your, your scoring here, which, you know, I think your scoring, just watching you is, is probably, you know, it's your scoring and your passing that obviously make you, you know, kind of a great player. Here, you know, we got a little – transition cam kind of just shovels it to you and then a three on the move mm -hmm. you know you're, you're not the biggest guy so I what I love about you is you get that elevation on your jumper you know you've got yeah. a couple guys here in your face I think Harris maybe comes in here he's about six 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 seven you get up and just knock it through you know what, what do you kind of do to work on shooting on the move and then kind of what were you seeing on, on this play here yeah just I mean at that point I was just I'm, I was confident you know Yep. Um, going into the game, I was confident. I had a good first game, which we play, that was the second game in sectionals. So I had a good first game, confident shooting. So I was like, let's keep it going. So also just to work on that, really just flick of the wrist, just quick. Just, I mean, yep. it doesn't matter yep. who's there, who's coming. Um, and then just being able to get a quick shot off. And when you do that, and I mean, I guess it works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just a couple more threes here. The other thing with you, here's another one, shooting on the move, quick catch up. What about squaring up and footwork? What, what do you do to work on that? And, and how does that kind of translate to your game? Because I see you do stuff like this a lot where you really look at yeah. how you come in here, you get those shoulders square, the footwork's good, and then that's what goes in, right? Yeah, really, the footwork part, I kind of, I don't really think about it, to be yeah. honest. I kind of just go wherever feels comfortable, comfortable. But really, like my feet, honestly, when I shoot, I feel like, if it were facing where the ball even came from and I shot it kind of like sideways, like, yeah. I feel like I'd be fine. Like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like feet just, it's obviously really, really important. I mean, look at Kobe, look at Michael Jordan, look at all them, their footwork. Right. But when you do that, like, I feel like when I come off a screen, just whatever's quickest to get my feet down and then just get right. the ball in that perfect rhythm shot and then just go from there. Yeah. Easy. And it goes right in. And then we got another one here coming through. You catch the ball here. You got a guy kind of up in your grill, right? You, yep. you go to the jab, quick jab, right up and in. So that's another one of those where I think that elevation on your shot is so key. Have you always yeah. had that? Have you needed to have that because you're not as big as maybe some of the guys that you're you're going mm -hmm. up against? I think it's just developed over the years. As yeah. one, I've gotten stronger. I've been able to jump higher. I've gotten faster. I've gotten quicker. And I've just learned new ways from – new guys like I go work out with guys that are in college and played NBA and I talk to them and like and just seeing how what they do and I study them and I watch them and just see what they do and like well on that jab it's easy because right once you jab and they put that hand down yep. you let it fly yep. or if they keep it up then you go go attack I mean it just really just depends so you really just got to see how the defense is playing you like if you see in that video right there he had his hand down when I jabbed yep. so that's like an automatic indicator boom right there let it fly so yep. 
and just creating like that space. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another one. Same same poor defender here. Actually, he goes off. It's Imes now. Little mm -hmm. jab, go right up. And I'm going to keep this one rolling because I, I thought this was interesting that they come down the court and I'm, so I just mentioned who's, you know, I guess he's their best player, another D1 yep. kid, right? He comes yep. down, he answers your three here in a second. So, you know, I just wanted to, what do you, what do you think about going up against guys like that? Is there a little extra juice in matchups like that? You see cross court, he knocks it down. You know, what, what is it about those matchups that's so fun? I just love it. Just proving everyone wrong and proving everyone like, what I've worked for yeah. and what I've where I've become and what I've done to get to get here, you know? Yeah. So I mean there's a lot of people still to this day, like, hey, you're too small. You can't go play here. You can't do that. Well, my freshman year I got told the same thing and look what I've done. Like, right. you know, so it's, I just always had that chip on my shoulder just to be able to like go out there and prove people wrong. And mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, I, every athlete loves that when people tell you you can't do something and you go out there and do it and you show them. And then you're like, well see I told you. Right. So I feel what like about, just those, all those matchups are just fun to play against. What about that particular matchup? Because I know there's a little bit of bad blood between Westfield and Zionsville. It's, you know, it's kind of like the Purdue IU is a big rivalry. You, you don't like them. They don't like you. What, what about those kind of matchups are you looking forward to? Oh, I just, I mean, I love it. That up tempo, high, like intense game. Yeah. Like they're all up in your grill. They're talking and then you don't say nothing, you know, like you don't need to say, no, I, I try not to say, say anything. Yeah, but, okay. like, I, I'll say something back, you know, if they're, like, saying something yeah. to me. So, it really just depends. I mean, usually I, I don't talk a lot on the court yeah. at all unless someone says something to me and then I'll say something back. But those type of just matchups are just fun to play against. I mean, Logan, he he's going to play D1 somewhere. Yeah. So, I mean, Absolutely. like, just getting the best out of him and then he gets the best out of me. So, I feel like you just love that type of uh, competition and just, I mean, it's just what you look for, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, going into a few more clips here on the offensive end, not just a shooter, although I do think that's obviously a big part of your game here in the championship. Uh -huh. You know, you guys are down, you know, pretty big here. You got Wack on yep. you, who, who's one of their – they had Wack and Joy on you, who are probably their two best perimeter guys defensively. Yep. You get him here, just a nice simple cross, blow by, and then a little layup. Nothing too crazy, but you guys kind of need a bucket there, right? I mean, you mm -hmm. know, start of the second half, you're down – just talk about, you know, what you're what you're thinking and what you're seeing on this play with Wack on you. I was just seeing how he was playing it. Like, you can see he jumped a little bit towards yeah. the screen. He saw it. And I, I have my eyes to, towards the screen. So, when you look like that, because he watches – I notice when he plays defense, he watches, like, the upper body. Yeah. So, when he's watching me, I kind of get my shoulders and eyes turned. And then once yeah. I, as I hit the cross, he kind of gets him off that. So, I get him, like, off balance. And then I just attack from downhill from there. And yeah, what about getting low? Getting low man wins. I always say that, right? Oh, and that's, yeah. You get real you low. You get here. low, like on those screens, or even when you come off the screen, like a big guy, because he's he's always upright yeah. most of the time. So when you get low and you're quick, you can keep get like those little corners, the little edges and angles to be able to cut them off or get in front of them and go score. Yeah, absolutely. So nice there. And then coming down here, I think I got two in a row here, just your floater game, which I think mm -hmm. yeah, a little runner there over Joya. And then I think on the next one, I've got another one here versus Zionsville and and so just talk about the floater game as someone who's not a 6-3 you know point guard I don't know exactly yeah. what you're listed at but how important is that especially in the pick and roll when you've got that big and drop and it's like is he going to come after yeah. me do I do you go to that floater often yeah I feel like now as you get older it's kind of what you need because yeah. usually when you're younger everyone's same size or I mean you'll have like a couple here and there but once you get older and you get like to the higher levels like if you can get a good floater game down, it is crazy. Yeah. Like, I've talked to, like, Jordan Holes. I've talked to, like, those other guards, like Ivy. I've talked to him, too. Like, just mm -hmm. about that stuff like that, just being able to get that shot down. Like, it's – if you can master that shot, it is crazy. Like, it yeah. opens up to so many things. Because then that requires the big to come out more, and then he comes out and you can get a drop-down pass, and there's a dunk. Yeah. So, I guess yeah. just being able to master that is just a huge advantage. Yeah, this year, I think we've seen Ivy kind of make that that little jumper there quite a bit where he's he kind of hangs in the air and then he's able to have yeah. that touch. Um, and, and like you said, with the drop downs, you do a ton of those. So we'll get to those right here. Um, here, I think the end of the, the quarter, this is before you shoot that floater, but boom, right down to D. Pasquale there. And 
you know, what's your, what's your process there? It's gotta be a quick decision, right? Where you're reading yeah. that big, you know, just talk me through this play here where you find a, a deep Pasquale, which you've given him yeah, just a million that easy buckets. When you look at him like that, like he yeah. comes up and jumps, tries to block the shot. So like I'll, I'll fake shoot that little floater. Yeah. Kind of like what I did right there. And right as I act like I was gonna go up, I look right at the corner of my eye, see the drop off and just quick. Boom. Yep. And then right there. Lay up. Easy. Here's another one. Driving kick. Got Hafner in the corner. You know, when I look at, when I watch you on those driving kicks, which you do a lot of, it's a lot of you you, you have a good ability to kind of wait until the last last possible second, you yeah. know, to deliver that. So watch here, it's like boom, you're getting hit, but you're you're getting it off and, and easy three for Cam, who's a great shooter. So what what do you do here? You just wait and then boom. I guess just saying like kind of like if depends what the defender does like he yeah. helped and I was kind of a late reaction so really what I was gonna try to do I think it was that play I was gonna fake it and just try to go finish yeah but he jumped in the way so it was kind of last second just like oh what am I gonna do so right. then kind of quick but I mean I guess just trying to absorb the contact because if you do that right there he's off balance and has to get out and close out to a good shooter so right right so here live dribble one hand gets it to half and he doesn't make the shot but follows it up what, what about these? Because you do a lot of these, too. You like to push push the pace. And this is a tough pass. I mean, live dribble, one hand, you got a guy in your face, and you're still kind of able to advance it up the court. And, you know, yeah. I feel like the the old saying about, you know, the passes get it up the court quicker than the ball handler can. I, I mm -hmm. think you kind of – you do that a lot. So just tell me about that a little bit. I think just advancing the ball, yeah, especially to, like, a guy like that, like Cam. Like, he's on – he'll make that. So, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, he missed it. but Yeah, but he made, he made the ball. Yeah. Exactly. So most of the time he's getting that. So I'm going to try to kick it up quick because, look, there's two guys back there guarding me. Yep. And if we get it up quick, that's a disadvantage for them. So, And I'm going to take that shot 100 out of 100 times. I'll let him shoot that every single time. Oh, yeah. I'm not even going to say nothing to him. Hey, keep shooting the ball. Like, that's the kind of shot that I want you to shoot. That's the shot that you want to shoot. So yeah. if you're confident with it, go for it. Now, what – and you and Cam, your relationship, what, what's it like on the floor? And you're talking about, you know, maybe you, you talk to him a little bit, maybe you don't, because obviously, they're, we, you know, as Purdue fans, we're thinking projection with you and Fletch, where it's like, all right, we got a knockdown shooter, we got a point guard that can get him the ball. I mean, that's a pretty good yeah. combination. So, you know, what are you what are you and Cam like kind of on the court and in that kind of chemistry? We're both just very, very confident in each other. Yeah. it's It's crazy. Like – me coming off with four people, he'd be like, he'd rather me shoot it than pass it to someone else. Like, he's like, if you're triple teamed, shoot the ball. Like, yeah. he'll tell me that. He's told me that before. Like, I'll pass it to one of our younger bigs who aren't ready to catch it, and I'll turn it over. We're like, Braden, shoot the ball. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I guess it's just confidence for ourselves. And, like, Cam, I mean, like, I'll have, like, situation last year, I hit three threes in a row, but I can come over and hit with one other three, but, you know, I swing it at the cam. Because right. I just have that confidence in him, and I know he's going to make the shot. Like, it's just – I don't know. It's just that chemistry and that confidence that we both have in each other that really separates us, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And then we got one here where – just watch this one more time. You to Cam. He, he shoots it. He'll get that and make it on the second try. Here you get blocked. Follow the shot. Boom. Easy dish. Penley. Is that Penley? I don't know. But he doesn't make yep. the shot. But either way, should be an assist. It will be at Purdue. Here's one where – you know, I think you do this a lot. You, you're good at following your shot and then just right back into it. Blocked. Okay, I'm following. Boom. Quick decision. Get the uh, what should have been a make. But what, yeah. what are you seeing there? Phil, he read the screen well. Blocked yeah. it, yeah. yeah. But then big guy, as I said again, get your eyes up. Like that, shoot that floater. Yeah. Just like I did earlier, like I told you about. And I came off and dropped it off to Van Dyke for a layup at the end yep. of the uh, half. But like – Boom. Right as I got it, yep. I look. I looked up. He's jumping up in the air, going by me. I have to drop down every single time. Yep, easy read there, and and good uh, good decision. And then I I wanted I noticed at the end of this play, you get blocked, you dump it off, whatever. But you watch you, you you're you're emotional there. You're kind of clapping. Is that because you miss you you got blocked? You were frustrated at yourself. Well, what are you what are you kind of thinking there? And and, and you do show a, a good bit of emotion on the court yeah. and what, where does that come from just being a competitor i guess just yeah i'm super super competitive you can ask any of the coaches like we'll play yeah. three on three and practice in the preseason yeah and i'm getting mad because i lose like it's yeah. just crazy like even here at my house my parents always get mad at me because me and my little brother fight it doesn't right, matter right. If it's on xbox football playing in the backyard on our mini hoop it doesn't matter what it is yeah. like i hate losing and 
it it's just I guess it's just what I've always had it's just that mindset of not wanting to lose like I just want it so much to win that I'll do anything do whatever it takes to get there absolutely and I've, I've seen this a few times just emotional out of you this is a big game here's another nice read to deep Pasquale just drop that down I really like this here just blow by quick there's the big again I think really what we're talking about here is it just comes down to reading that big and I think you do a great job of that yep. what you know watching this obviously these guys aren't aren't the big 10 opponents you're going to see just to kind of relate mm -hmm. this back to Purdue, right? I mean, what, yep. what are you kind of preparing for? Is there anything you can do? I mean, certainly not in practice unless you guys have added somebody because last <laughs> year you, you weren't, you weren't the tallest team. I, I do love how yeah. B Pasquale plays, but I don't think he's a, uh, you know, an ED or somebody like that, but yes. uh, you know, what, what are you working on to kind of, okay, there's a big, but what if he's seven, four, you know what I mean? Yes. So what, what are you kind of thinking about in regards to Purdue? I know you still have your senior season and, and have a lot of goals, but, but I'm sure you're at least thinking about kind of the transition that you'll have to make. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a big, I mean, huge transition. Cause I wish we had a big, you know, yeah, a, well, a big, sure. big, yeah. you know, I mean, I love our guys. It doesn't matter yeah. who it is. Like I like playing small. I do. And so I guess this is going to be really big. Um, I guess this is going to be a quick adjustment. So, I mean, I'll, I'll get there in June. So yeah. I, mean, I guess I have like what three, four months before we get going and get started, but I'll figure it out. I mean, I guess just learning not to throw that bounce pass so like an ED, more yeah. to throw it up, and like mo mostly actually all those guys. I mean, like all of them. It doesn't matter who it is, just like Gillis and all them ED. So just make sure you still yeah, the ball so making that yeah. bounce pass. Yeah. So yeah, I think they've got a lot of guys, and and even Heidi can get up there a little bit. I've oh, seen yeah. a little bit of what what he can do. Um, but just watch this one again. I like like that one. Just boom, and then they'll finish that at Purdue, and then again here, and then I think I had one more easy drop down, and then coming back here. Uh, yeah, you're run, reading the pick, split, kick out, Hafner, easy. That's the kind of thing that I I think you do a lot. So talk me through this here. You're coming off this ball screen. You read that big. You you split, and then boom, see that guy helping and kick. Is that just yeah? Uh, the product of that trust with cam you kind of just read that so quickly boom easy three yeah just read that defender really just because look how far he came in he's already moving in coming he, i mean he, he had almost two feet in the paint like yeah i, I don't, don't know have, why like, he's leaving cam there. i find that kind of disrespectful yeah, yeah. like how, how are you leaving a shooter like that so wide open yeah like it doesn't know. matter if it's lebron james coming down there but you have steph curry in the corner like you're never leaving that well and he's so got the felt like hey throw that to the corner knock it down yeah, and right, Reichert really does a decent job here. He actually, if you had shot that, he might have affected it. So I don't know what the guy yep. was doing there, but it's a good read nonetheless. All right, so we got some defensive clips here. Let's start with a, a not so great one here. So you got Joya. You come in here, just reach a little bit. He goes in and gets the layup. Talk to me just a little bit about the adjustment you'll need to make in the Big Ten and just what you're kind mm -hmm. of working on as a perimeter defender. Because as we'll see in this next clip, it's a similar situation later on in the game and you, you give, you block a shot and, and go back up the court, but w what are you yeah. kind of working on defensively and, and how do you work on it defensively? So defensively, I think really it's just more of a mindset than to work on anything. Yeah. You know, um, I've got actually, I feel like I've got a lot better at it. Okay. All the coaches has been saying that all the, I mean, Coach Payne has been telling me to play at that level. You're going to need to play defense. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess part of last year, I mean, obviously I had a breakdown right there, but most of the times I'm going to, like, give it my all, 100%, play that defense. But I guess just being able to have that mindset of not getting scored on, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. you got to prove that you're better than this guy no matter what, and if he scores on you, you got to take that personally. So mm -hmm. I feel like after that happened, it was just more like you got to get in and play defense now. Right, right. And we, we move on here, I think. Yeah, here we go. So th they're running a little action here. You got Suter. You're in the man here, help side. You come up, you get Joya, slide those feet, block the shot, and you've got the ball. You're going up the court. And this is a, just a great pass to Cam. Boom. Three. This is when I, I was – this is when it was a really good game in that first half. Yeah. So, you know, talk me through this. You, you've been beaten by him once. Do you kind of – do you kind of adjust as the game goes on to a guy like, okay, here's Joya, you know, here's what he wants to do. And then you don't get beat that, that next time. And you actually end up with a block here. And then obviously the great, the great transition pass here. 
Yeah, I feel like it was just more like a bad read by me in the first one I got beat on. I mean, yeah. I went for the reach, and I wasn't yeah. disciplined on that one. Yeah. I was more disciplined on here not to go for that and kind of just chest up because, I mean, I know he's not going to make that shot over me, and if he makes it, then, I mean, there's nothing you can really do about that. Oh, but, yeah, you get you give him a tip of the hat, right? I mean, yep. not much. So I felt like that was just more like, a hey, stay in front, be disciplined, and get the block, go push it, and get it to your shooter. Yeah, easy, knock down. Then here, I really like this just save, hustle, play. They go down, your team gets a basket because of it. One of the few that you're, you know, you don't, this doesn't show up in the box score. You're not, you're not scoring or assisting on, on this play mm-hmm. here, but, but it gets your team a basket and increases that lead. So just kind of talk about that, the hustle and, and the, the impact you can have, even if it's not in the box score. Oh, yeah. I feel like hustle's huge. I mean, for me personally and as my team, like I'll get all my teammates, you can ask all of them if they're not diving on the ball next to him, like especially Cam. Yeah. Like if you asked him, he'd be like, oh, yes, he says that to me a lot. Like, yeah. I feel like that should be a non-given, you know, like right. that should be something that everyone is expected to do, not like shouldn't get rewarded from it. You shouldn't get applauded for it or a Gatorade or something for it. Like you should be able, that right. should be like something you do. And right. I feel like every time you step on the floor, you give your 100% hustle. And if you lose, then you lose. But if you don't, then look what you did to get that win or whatever. Absolutely. And, and you know, did your team, you know, do you, you guys chart deflections? You guys are one of the, you're one of those teams. So I see you, you get one here and then you, you save it. And I know they're going to probably definitely do that in college, but you know, what, what's that going to be like? Just, just that kind of havoc. And I don't know if your team does that or not, but, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of interesting how, how some teams do. And I think you'll probably see that Purdue. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, I like it, so, you know, just that yeah. type of, intense defense where everyone's always in the gap ready to play and everyone's going to hustle and you know that everyone's got your back so yeah I'm looking forward to that yeah here you get get switched on to Harris you do a really nice job chest up he's going nowhere they do get a basket but really nice just you know again you're gonna you're gonna see that a lot probably in the big 10 I mean I would think Mm -hmm. guy's much better than him no disrespect to him he's a good player but you know obviously what are you what are you seeing here? Because the teams are maybe even gonna wanna try and switch on to you with these bigger guys mm-hmm. and get a mismatch, but you you hold your own here and you make them make a pretty nice pass actually there. Um, I guess just being able to have trust in your teammates to be in your help as well. And yeah. just uh I mean there we had a little bit of a late we went to go double and we didn't have anyone else to drop off. But right. I mean, in general just I mean, I'll have that I'll have that there. We'll be fine. Yeah. Um I mean, people are obviously going to do that. People still do that now, but they'll be surprised when I'll be able to hold my ground for the most part. Yeah, and is that is that weight room too? I mean, is that just being strong, sure. being up? You know, you told me you're about to go work out at three. Yep. Is that is that just that that upper body strength and and staying in the gym and being ready for that? Yeah, or like I've already this off season, I've gained like twelve pounds of muscle. Okay. Yeah. Like like I'm benching two fifty. Okay. I'm squatting like 385. So I feel like it's just getting in the weight room. Yeah. Yeah. And getting that upper body strength and go from there. And is that something they, they tell you about at Purdue? You know, do they talk about their, their weight facilities and kind of their program? Because, you know, I think we hear a lot about like, oh yeah, he's going to go to a D1, D1 weight program and that whole thing. Mm-hmm. I know they have a good one there with coach Welsh, but have yeah. they told you about that at all? Um, No, I talked to actually Braden or, what is it? I don't think it's Brandon, Brandon, whatever coach Um, yeah, about yeah. the strength stuff. And he was just talking about it briefly. It wasn't like a good, like long conversation about it, but yeah, I mean, I know that we'll be there ready to, you know, get to work and stuff, but I don't know like any of the goals that they want, like gain weight, gain whatever. Right, right. So I guess They'll we'll figure that, that out when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Here you go. Another hustle play. Just making that, making that from an easy layup. You guys are up, here it's you know Noblesville really kind of came did come back in this game did a nice job here's a big play where they they could cut it to to 10 here and you just deny that you know obviously like to save that but it's a tough play you make a nice nice hustle play there and then we got here up the court long ball easy for Penley there yep gonna keep this clip playing because it's an eight point game 220 to go they got a What's his name? He's a Smith too, I think. Twelve. EJ. Yeah. Yeah. Good player. Had made some big shots. Rip him. Going the other way. Could easily go up, but shovel it back. Welsh gets the bucket. 
you know, talk about that. Just big moment in the game. You kind of ice it here with a, a strip of a really good player, just staying mm-hmm. locked in defensively and then making the unselfish play instead of trying to, you know, maybe go up and 30 blocks you there. Yeah. Um, I feel like just being, like you said, I'm like a super unselfish guy. Like, yeah. I, I just love doing that, you know, like they're, that guy's coming trying to block me. I mean, I got a wide open teammate. Why not force something up and yeah. possibly get blocked out of bounds or anything? So, like, I mean, why as well just get the two? So, yeah. I feel like that's always been a mentality. Like, the same thing you always say, why I always read, kick it to Cam. Like, it's just because I'm selfish. I'm not going to force, like, a contested 360 layup over a wide open corner three to a shooter. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like just being really unselfish and having – that trust in your teammates that they're going to make the play and do their job. Yeah, absolutely. I love that play. And I think that that's a lot of what you, you show on tape. Obviously I've talked to you in the past about that 360 pass you made. You can, yep. you can be flashy with it. I wasn't going to put that on here cause I won't steal from uh, ink tapes, but yeah. uh, I get this, this using the official film here, but uh, you know, I just, I love that unselfishness of your game. I think that's probably what, what produces as well. So, Braden, I appreciate you, man. Uh, really looking forward to seeing you this season. Um, hopefully I'll make it to a few games, uh, but I appreciate you coming on here and, and uh, watching some film. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for having me.